Let's get more on this story now with Tyson Barker from the Aspen Institute. He's also an expert on foreign and security policy. Tyson, good to have you back with us. There's been doubts over how close Vice President uh, Pence is with the president. Uh, what is your take on that? And what do you think we can expect from the vice president today in these talks? Well, the one thing that we can already determine, based on last week's events with Mike Flynn, is that the vice president does have influence in foreign security policy. Clearly, uh, lying to the vice president for national security uh, advisor is a fireable offense. That said, uh, clearly we're getting mixed messages even this weekend as the vice president is in Munich saying that NATO, our commitments to NATO are unwavering, while the president himself is in Florida again questioning our commitments to NATO. What do you make of these mixed messages that we're getting? It's really hard to tell, and I think that leaders across Europe are really trying to determine which one is the one that they can count on. We have three, actually four, cabinet-level officials here in Europe this week, Tillerson, Pence, Mattis, and Kelly, all singing from the same song sheet, saying that the commitment stays the same. We're consistent there. But from the president himself, we're hearing something very different. Uh, Vice President Pence also saying the U.S. will stand firm against Moscow. What do you think that meant? Well, he also uh, kind of reiterated the president's um, desire to uh, reach out to Moscow and find a new basis for a relationship, uh, mainly based on counterterrorism. So it's really hard to tell. We're still in a very uh, uncertain space as far as the U.S.-Russia relationship. There's going to be a lot of development, and we'll be able to determine a lot more when the president himself meets with Vladimir Putin in the coming weeks. We've heard the president also be very vocal in his support for the Brexit campaign, for example, and that vote there. Um, is Mike Pence in Brussels today to patch things up a bit? So this is one of the uh, worrying um, factors coming out of Munich was the fact that although we had three major speeches by three senior uh, officials, including Pence, nobody mentioned the European Union once. And our commitment, our 70-year commitment to the European project, European integration, is still under question. So today is going to be the first real sign we have from the vice president at somebody at that level, uh, whether or not that commitment to the European project will continue. If that commitment isn't there, are we going to see Brussels and countries like Germany actually really seek new partnerships? Well, I think that that would be a wise strategy. It seems like right now, in this age of uncertainty, all major leaders are taking an all-of-the-above strategy, which is, yes, continue with those legacy relationships, legacy commitments, but look for new partners, look for new ways of doing business. How much damage do you think the Trump presidency could do to the EU, even if they are seeking new partnerships? Um, what the primary uh, uncertainty in the EU is coming from domestically. It's coming from within. Right now, we've got three elections on our hands. Two, two of them, you have major insurgencies from populist parties, even here in Germany with the AfD uh, polling at around 15%. So we have to come through this election gauntlet before we can really determine what uh, appetite there is for integration going forward. And the U.S. is going to be watching this as well because they need to respond to the Democratic uh, voters and populations in the in the European Union itself. All right, Tyson Barker from the Aspen Institute. Thank you so much for joining us.